Hi, I'm Andy Orm from O'Reilly Media. I'm talking today with Andrea Stefik, who is an assistant professor of computer science at Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville. And uh, I think that Andreas has been doing some very interesting work on um, computer languages and checking the ease of learning for computer languages. Could you say a bit about that? Yeah, hi. Uh, I am working on a, a computer programming language right now that we call Quorum. Uh, Quorum is a JVM or Java Virtual Machine programming language where we've done a great deal of study on how humans actually use the language. So we've been doing analysis of how novices understand the syntax, analysis of the type systems of the language, and other features as well. And I think that um, many programmers who might be listening to this say, what's the big deal about having a language that's easy to use? I learned how to program. What's the big deal? But uh, when you realize that computer science departments are wringing their hands over the low enrollments and over the high dropout rate, and, of course, mm -hmm. companies out there are all screaming for more programmers. I think this is very important to find out how we can get more people to learn a language. And you've also done some research into existing languages, like our, our old favorite of everybody's, Perl, uh, <laughs> to <laughs> discuss, look at learnability. Yeah, so we ran a study last year that... Um, uh, well, where what we did is we took Quorum, where we'd been really careful in the syntax design and semantics design and stuff like that, and we compared it against two languages, and we just had novices try it, just people with no experience off the street, if you will, uh, that are uh, uh, students come in and try the languages. I mean, it's a simple test. Put people in a room, have them try the languages, right? When we did that, we found some weird results that we weren't really expecting. So I already said we tried Quorum and Perl. There was actually another language we tried too, which we called Randomo. And the idea in Randomo is that it's a it's a made up language where we took all the the so to speak good choices in Quorum, and we race replaced them with random characters from the ASCII table. Mm -hmm. So these are very it's a very esoteric language that sort of acts kind of like a sugar pill in medicine. It's kind of like a placebo or a a sham treatment, if you will. You know, in other words, something we would expect people would have trouble with. Unfortunately, when we tried it, we found that even though Quorum people were able to use much more effectively than Perl and Randomo, of course, unfortunately, that, that wasn't actually true with Perl. Unfortunately, novices, we found no evidence to suggest that they could do it much differently. Now, it's a small sample size study. We've actually replicated it since then, and so we know that the answer is basically right, but um, kind of a surprising result that we had. So, uh, What are some of the things that Quorum does to make a language easier to master? Okay, so there's some specific things that are really obvious. If you think about the syntax that's been used in sort of C style for a long time, We've actually used quite a few esoteric characters and options. So I'll give you an example. Um, if I write a loop uh, in C style syntax, Perl, Java, or many other languages, it might be something like for left paren int i equals zero semicolon i less than 10 semicolon i, less, uh, I plus plus right paren left brace, right? Quora might say something like repeat 10 times, mm -hmm. right? So, now it's funny, whenever I tell that to a programmer, oftentimes people sort of say, yeah, but who cares? But when I show that to a novice, they say, I understand that. I know what that means, right? Whereas the other option, uh, we, we have evidence suggesting that that's, that's tough for students when they first start general purpose programming languages. So Can uh, the other languages cover over the problem by having higher level constructs like iterators? That's a good question, and I don't know the answer to that. However, um, it's definitely something that's worth testing, and I think that it's uh, something that my lab has been actually actively working on. So that's a, that's a great question, and I, I don't know the answer yet. So, uh, Another question, which I think we discussed a bit before, is whether a language that's easy to learn is still a good language to use five years later and a good language to maintain that's a really hard question to answer. On the one hand, my suspicion is that there are natural trade-offs between beginners and uh, uh, more experienced users. I'll, I'll give you an example. So some of the studies that we've conducted uh, with a colleague of mine in Germany um, that on 
type systems. You know, this old debate between static type systems where you have to actually say it's an integer or a float or whatever, and dynamic type systems where you just say A equals five or A equals some object. The data from those experiments shows that static type systems actually improve programmers' productivity, right? Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. When we run studies on novices, the data at least seems to indicate that these type annotations are actually hard to learn initially. So that leads to a trade-off. Do we include the type annotations knowing it will help you later, probably, or do we remove the type annotations knowing it might be a problem initially? Well, what we're trying to do is trying to find a compromise. So on the next version of Quorum, which is coming out, I don't know, in a couple weeks or a month or so, uh, Quorum 1.7, we've actually developed a type inference system, which actually removes many of the annotations, so you don't have to declare them, which should give you the advantage to novices, but it's still fully statically typed, which should give you the advantage to more experienced users as well. So I think that the important point is, if we document the trade-offs empirically, we could use that to make languages easier to use for everybody. So there are some serious um, semantic issues as well as little things like whether you use repeat or for. Absolutely, I mean, uh, it's surprising. So for example, in Perl, just uh, to, to, get, to throw some numbers out off the top of my head, if you have a dynamically typed language and you require the dollar symbol, well, novices don't actually get that dollar symbol correct 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, if a language like Ruby, which doesn't require any symbol for dynamic typing, novices don't have trouble with that because it's impossible to mess up. There's no symbol to type. So whereas with a statically typed language like Java or even uh, Quorum 1.0, uh, you have to actually write words like integer or int or something like that. And it turned out novices only got those words correct something like half the time. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that lowers their accuracy. They get compiler errors more often, it seems. But we have to document the trade-offs to know that, right? Mm -hmm. Where is Quorum being used? Uh, so actually, Quorum was designed originally uh, as part of a, a National Science Foundation project that I have to work with blind children. Um, and when we designed the language, we were actually trying to just make it easier to understand through text-to-speech. Mm -hmm. We didn't even think to analyze whether it'd be easier for novices until later when people sort of told us, hey, this might actually just be easier for everybody. So it, the point is, it was actually designed for blind individuals, and it's used all over the country at schools for the blind. Uh, and only recently have we decided to make it sort of available for anybody. So it's pretty new language, I would say. And it's an interesting case, a classic case where accessibility helps everybody in the long run, or we hope so. Yeah, the you know the curb cut effect is what some people call that. You know, they used to put curb cuts in for people with wheelchairs, but now you can use it if you have a bike. You know, so exactly. Uh, does Quorum fall on any particular scale in terms of like uh, functional programming versus imperative and stuff like that? Uh, well, I, I call uh, Quorum an evidence-based language, and what that means is that if anybody in the world has uh, a empirically driven theory where they have formal empirical evidence to back up their claims, we'll change Quorum to meet with whatever the evidence says. In other words, if somebody shows us a study on closures that gives formal empirical evidence saying that it helps in the design, we'll change it. If they show formal empirical evidence that one of the features is better or another for particular groups, we'll change it. The whole point is to be as neutral as possible to the sort of paradigm wars that are out there and just say, whatever the evidence shows, that's what the language should be. That's the idea. Uh, now, granted, it does have classes and it does have stuff like that. It is object-oriented in that sense. But, you know, um, that's only because you have to choose a design initially as soon as we gather more and more evidence, it will change over time to whatever wins, if you will. So I, I don't believe that in a year or two, the world will be flocking to Quorum and we'll have to throw out <laughs> all our books on C Sharp and Java, but uh, what can other languages meanwhile learn from what you're doing? Yeah, well, that's almost certainly true, and I hope that the whole world wouldn't flock to it in a year or two. That would be uh, terrifying. However, I think that what we can learn from a project like Quorum 
is what are the trade-offs with actual human users in designing programming? Like, you know, th think about it. How, how many decades have we debated over minor variations in all sorts of features in, in languages? I think a project like Quorum isn't so much designed for just getting the language adopted. That's not really the goal. I think the goal is to rigorously document and end at least some of the debate in language design so that when a new language comes around, they say, okay, there's some actual evidence on these choices. Let's choose the best one in my new language. You know, if you're designing Ruby 3.0 or C Sharp 10.0 or whatever you want, then you say, all right, let's look at the actual evidence for these things and try to improve our language through scientific methods instead of just charismatic designers and opinionated angry discussions and mm -hmm. flame wars and whatever people do. Right. And you indicated to me that there's evidence Python and Ruby are um, closer to Quorum and being easy to use. Yeah, so I haven't... Uh, published all of these details yet, so I, I don't want to go in full detail, but I think that Ruby and Python have both made some very smart choices syntactically. Now, that doesn't mean that um, they're always better. For I'll give you a trade-off. We actually found in our last study that Ruby-style if statements were actually easier to use than the one in Quorum. From my perspective, that's amazing because we then now know that the Ruby style is slightly better, so we just changed Quorum to make it like Ruby. Th but this is the point, right? The moment you have evidence on the table where you can say one choice is better than another, you can change your language and improve it. Mm -hmm. So Ruby actually, the designer of Ruby did an amazing job, and I think there's lots of choices uh, that we can learn from once we have the data in hand. So. Okay. Thank you for uh, your insights, Andreas. Uh, Thanks for inviting me to talk. Seeing more about Quorum. Thanks.